just take a look at this. Well, hello and welcome from Port Einan on the South Gower coast in South Wales. I'm actually in a bit of a rush because the place where I'm going to is only accessible at low tide and that's fast approaching. It's already gone nine and low tide's about 10.25 and I need to get down there, film and get back before the tide comes in. Anyway, this place I'm passing on the edge of Port Island Bay looks interesting and I'll have a look at that on the way back when I've got more time and also I'll give you the details of where I parked etc. But I am in a rush, so let's crack on. Well if you're wondering where Mel is, and surprisingly she's not into climbing over rocks at 9 o'clock in the morning, however next week we are off to Snowdonia for some Welsh food and drink and she is joining me for that one. <laughs> anyway, it's getting later. I have to get the tide. Let's go. So Culver Hall, just around the corner from Port Einan. You have to walk down quite a steep embankment to get there alongside the, the cliff. It isn't that bad, but you need to be fairly mobile to get down. And obviously you need to get up as well. So, and also when you get to the bottom, it is quite rocky. So I'll take a look at that. Anyway, I'll show you that in more detail. Again, the time is already coming up to half past nine, so I need to get a move on. So this is Culver Hole hidden in the cliffs just around the corner from Port Einan. It's believed to be an old dovecot. Culver, the word, means dove or pigeon. And pigeon was an important source for food, whether it's the meat or the eggs. And it's quite a big structure. It's 20 metres high and the walls are up to three metres thick and they taper as it goes up. But interestingly, when I was researching this, I looked at the Cadu website. It's a listed building, and on their listing, oh, by the way, Cadu are the agency in charge of a lot of historic places in Wales. And in the listing, they mention a devcot may not have been the primary use for the building. It obviously has been used as a devcot, because if you go inside, there are nesting boxes all the way up. But they believe maybe it may have been built for an, uh, another purpose originally. Unfortunately, there is an entrance at the bottom we can crawl in, but because of the tides, the bank of pebbles have built up and blocked it at the moment, so I can't get in. I did bring a light with me, so anyway, let's go and take a closer look. So this is the access. I don't fancy going in there. Middle of November and seasonably warm weather. Anyway, getting back to what Cadu said in the listing documents, they give three reasons why they think a devcot may not have been the initial usage of the building. One, the sheer size, 20 meters tall, three meters thick walls. Two, what are the reasons for all those larger doors and windows high up? You need those for doves or pigeons? And thirdly, the location. It's really hard to get to. Other devcots, you know, uh, are in fields, by manor houses and things like that. But against that, large devcots weren't that unusual in the Middle Ages. And inside, which we can't see, the nesting boxes seem like they were an integral part of the building. Some people think the presence of the doors and windows imply there was some, well, internal flaws, and also there's a staircase inside. Some people also think 
the sheer size of it and the inaccessibility implies the original usage was sort of defensive. Well, whenever you get a building like this by the sea, you always get stories and legends around it. And one of them has an element of truth because it relates to Port Anion Castle. And in documents from the 14th century, it is mentioned. They don't know exactly where. Some people believe it could have been at the top of the cliff. And this was somehow attached to it from an entrance at the top. Well, that story of a stronghold and a link to this building isn't totally far-fetched because in Carrickenin, the castle in Carmarthenshire, that castle does have a cave underneath it and it is linked by a tunnel. And in later years, the cave was used as a dovecot. So it's not totally unbelievable. Although I think if there was some sort of connection between this and a castle at the top, they would have found more evidence of it within the structure. I love the romantic side of these buildings and the stories and legends and ghost stories, but I think it probably was used for storage in a dev cot or something. Anyway, talking of smugglers and pirates, there are some more stories associated with Culver Hole. One local legend involves a notorious pirate and smuggler known as John Lucas, and is said he used fortified Culver Hull as a centre for his operations. It was said he was extremely violent, but extremely good looking, just like me. No, I'm not violent, I'm a big softy. I could have been a highwayman, Dandy Desmond. <laughs> well, anyway, he used this as a his centre of operations, and it's claimed he had a tunnel from here to the Salt House, which we passed in Port Ayn in the ruins we passed earlier. And referring to that tunnel from here, from the Salt House on Port Ayn to here, online I found a passage, and it says, with the battlement and the walls thereof all round reached even unto the cliff and the rocks on the edge of the wild part of the foreshore near Port Agnon, and store in said stronghold with arms and also rebuilded and repaired another stronghold called Culver Hole, connected the two strongholds by a passage under the grounds whereof no man was told the mouth. Ooh. Like John Lucas the pirate and Dandy Desmond, I can still take your money, but I can do it in a more civilised way. If you enjoy the video, you can give me a tip. There's a new button below. Thanks. Buy me a coffee. You don't have to. Well, that's as far as I can get in. I suppose if you come, out, come down earlier, you can clear the pebbles and get in. But crawling in there, it's not my idea of fun. I'm a bit claustrophobic. Actually, caving is my idea of hell, being stuck somewhere like that. <laughs> It's raining a bit, so I'll be quick. Anyway, I've come back over from Culver Hole and I've come to the place I mentioned at the start. Uh, it's called the Salt House. It's a ruin on the right-hand side of the bay. And to get to Culver Hole, if you walk to this ruin and you look up to your right, you can see an obelisk on top of the hill. Walk up to there and then the path leads you down to Culver Hole from the left. Anyway, back to this place, the Salt House. As the name suggests, it was used to produce salt. And there's a letter, one of the first mentions of the place was a letter from the 16th century when they mentions a ship carrying a cargo of salt out of Port Ainen. 
So this building and complex, it was built around the 16th century. Again, by the Lucas family. Remember those mentioned those from Culverhope, John Lucas. And, um, and this is where they said there was a link between the two, a tunnel. Uh, and there's lots of stories about this place as well, about smuggling, but as it was a salt house, I would take all those stories with a pinch of salt. Very poor, I know, very poor. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look around. According to the information stand, this section is the oldest part of the salt house, and this dates from the early 16th century. So how did it work? Well, in front of the ruins, you'll find this area, which collected the seawater. It was then pumped up to a, a room above, where it was heated in large pans. The pans then would obviously, or well, the water would evaporate, leaving the salt in the pans, which was then collected. So once the salt was collected, it was then stored in the north part of the building to thoroughly dry off before being packed and shipped off. If you want to see some more hidden whales, there's some videos coming up next, and I'll see you in one of those. Unfortunately, the weather has beaten me today. Well, it's whales, what do you expect?